News for you, awesome websites without code. Now let's take a look at an overview of Adobe Muse and preparing the interface. Adobe Muse is a program by Adobe that allows you to build websites without knowing any code. To get access to Adobe Muse, you can sign up for a Creative Cloud membership. To do this, go to creativecloud.com. Here you can select a membership for individuals or for businesses. I will go ahead and click on individuals. And here in the upper right, we have this button that says choose a plan. So I'll go ahead and click on choose a plan. And here we have the different plans. I would recommend the all apps plan for $49.99 a month as Adobe Muse integrates really well with Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, and Adobe Animate CC. Here to the left, you can just get the single app. So here in the drop down, you can click on Adobe Muse and Adobe Muse is $14.99 a month. Now let's get into the Adobe Muse interface. So I'll go ahead and click on Adobe Muse. When you first open Adobe Muse, you are prompted with your most recent projects. Here we're in the Creative Cloud files. So if you have any .muse files in the Creative Cloud, they will appear here. Or you can click on Recent to view your most recent projects. We also have these buttons here so you can create a new website or open a website on your computer. I will go ahead and click on New. And then I'll click OK. And here we have the plan view, which is also called the sitemap. And here it shows you all the pages of the website. You can arrange the thumbnails vertically or horizontally by clicking on these buttons here at the top. So right now we're in the vertical sitemap display. If you click on the horizontal sitemap display, the thumbnails will be previewed horizontally. I'll go back to the vertical sitemap display. Uh, for this course, we're going to be using the vertical sitemap display. Uh, to add pages, you can hover over any existing page. And then when you hover over the page, plus symbols will appear at the top, right, and the bottom of the page. To add top level pages, you can click on the top plus symbol or the bottom plus symbol. So I'll go ahead and add a few top level pages. To add subpages, you can click to the right of the page. You can also add top level pages to subpages by clicking on the plus symbol above or below the page. And you can add subpages as well, and so on and so on. You can also delete pages by clicking on the X here in the upper right corner. So I'll go ahead and delete these pages here. And just as an example, I'll actually add a few more pages. We'll add a few pages back. Uh, right now we're in the vertical sitemap display. If we go to horizontal, the pages align horizontally. So it's just a matter of preference. Um, I myself like the vertical sitemap display. So I'll go ahead and close these here. You can also rename the page by double clicking on the page name and renaming the page. To the left we have what are called master pages. Anything added to a master page can be applied to multiple pages if the page has the master page applied to it. For instance, I can add a menu to the master page and then assign the master page to multiple pages, and all those pages will have the menu. This saves time because now I don't have to copy and paste a menu to multiple pages on my website. The master page is very useful for headers and footers because most websites have a header with a logo and a menu and also a footer section with more information about the website. You can have multiple master pages by clicking on the plus symbol below the master page. You can also rename the master page. To apply a master page to a web page, you can right click on the page, go to masters, and then here you can select the different master pages that are available. So here we have the A master and the master page we just created. You can also say no master so the page will have no master page applied to it. Now let's move on to the design view. This is where you will design and add the elements for your website. You can access the design view by clicking in the upper right where it says design or you can double click on the page. I will go ahead and double click. This is what the design view looks like initially. To the left, 
we have the toolbar and here we have the selection tool, the crop tool, the text tool, the rectangle and ellipse tool, the rectangle frame tool and the ellipse frame tool, the hand tool, the zoom tool, the anchor point tool, and the formatting text across breakpoints here as well, where you can select across breakpoint or formatting on current breakpoint. And this will become more clear as we go through the course. At the top, we have the control bar. This changes depending on whether you are working with rectangles, images, or text. It is very convenient for quickly changing the properties of an element. To the right, we have a few different panels. What each panel does will become more clear as we go through the course. You can rearrange these panels to best suit your design purposes. So I can click and drag and move panels around. And if I click, it'll show me the panel as well. I myself will be placing the transform, text and swatches panel to the left side of the interface. If you don't see these panels, you can go to window and here you can click on transform, text and swatches. To move panels to the left, you can simply click, hold and drag and move the panel to the left side of the interface. You will see a blue line once it is on the left. The first panel will show a blue line to the left and then the other panels can just go underneath the first panel. Once the panels are to the left, you can click on the expand panels button to show the properties of the panels. So these panels are going to be used quite often throughout the course. At the top, we have the breakpoints bar. Here you will be able to add the breakpoints for the website. You can have a fixed width or fluid width breakpoint. Fixed width breakpoints do not respond to the browser width. So to have a fixed width breakpoint, you can right click and uncheck fluid width. And now we have a fixed width breakpoint. For this course, we're gonna be using fluid width breakpoints. On day 10, we will work with a fixed width breakpoint to create a one-to-one -one breakpoint. To add breakpoints, you can right click and select add breakpoint. So I'll right click and select add breakpoint. And then we have the add breakpoint dialog box. So here you can select fluid width or fixed width breakpoint, and you can set the breakpoint width. So here I'll say 840. And then we have a breakpoint at the 840 mark here. You can also use the breakpoint scrubber tool to simulate the browser width. And once the breakpoint scrubber is at a point where you want to add a breakpoint, you can let go of the breakpoint scrubber. I'm trying to match it at 600. So there we have it at 600. And then a plus symbol will appear right above the breakpoint scrubber. And here you can click the plus symbol to add the breakpoint. For this course, we will be using predetermined values for the breakpoints as mentioned in day one, part two, with the website showcase. The minimum width is where the website will stop responding to the browser width. So here we have a minimum width at 320 and it's depicted by the darker overlay. If there was a device that was less than 320 pixels in width, it would not fit the device. Small devices are usually not smaller than 320 pixels in width. To the left and the right of the breakpoints bar, we have what are called page expansion buttons. If the arrows are pointing inwards, this means that the page will not expand beyond the largest breakpoint. If they are pointing outwards, this means that the page will expand beyond the largest breakpoint. This will become more clear as we go through the course. The last tool I will go over is the vertical move handle. This tool is very useful when you want to make space at a certain section within the website. I will show an example. For now, I'll go ahead and delete these breakpoints by right clicking and selecting delete breakpoint. And I'll go ahead and create a rectangle with the rectangle tool. So here to the left, we have the rectangle tool. So I'll select it here and then I'll create a rectangle. I'll fill the rectangle with any color. So I'll select the fill drop down here at the top and select any color. And once you select the element, the vertical move handle will appear to the left and it's an arrow pointing up and pointing down. So if I click, hold and drag the vertical move handle, I can move this element down the page. I'll go ahead and create another rectangle and I'll give it any color here. So if I wanted to create space between these two elements, I could select the second element and use the vertical move handle to move the element down the page 
to create more space between these two elements. When working with the layout of elements on different breakpoints, the vertical move handle is very useful. For example, on a tablet layout, you might want to make a certain section a bit taller to fit the device. With the vertical move handle, you can just move elements down the page simply by clicking, holding, and dragging down the vertical move handle. All the elements will be moved down the website, and you will then have space to rearrange the elements for that device. Now let's move on to the preview options in Adobe Muse. Adobe Muse has its own preview, so you can preview the website by clicking on preview. I myself like to go to file, preview page, and browser, as the website will be previewed on my default browser, and it'll give me a better representation of what the website will actually look like in a browser. You can also copy this link up here and paste it in different browsers to test the website across different browsers. There's also a publish option here to the right and we will be using this on day 16 when we publish the website to a live server. So you can publish to an FTP host, business catalyst, or export as HTML. We have now gone over an overview of Adobe Muse and preparing the interface. Day one is complete and we will be moving on to day two where we will be installing the web fonts for the website. Muse for you, awesome websites without code.